In this video, we are going to look at what is physical and chemical property. We will also further classify physical property as either intensive or extensive. Physical property can be observed without changing the chemical identity of the substance. Chemical property, on the other hand, is observed after the chemical identity of the substance changed. So the main difference between physical and chemical property lies in the chemical identity of the substance, whether it changed or not. For most physical properties, we can further classify them as either intensive or extensive property. Intensive property is independent on the amount of substance, while extensive property is dependent on the amount of substance. To make it easier, we can classify whether a property is physical or chemical by asking a simple question, whether that property can be observed without changing the substance identity. If yes, then it's a physical property. If no, then it's a chemical property. To further classify physical property, we can ask if that property depends on the amount of the matter being measured. If yes, then it's an extensive property. If no, then it's an intensive property. Let's test out this flowchart using a few examples. Before we start, would you like to pause and give it a try on your own first? We can go through them together when you're ready. We'll start with the first one, heat of combustion. It's the amount of heat that's released when a substance is burned in oxygen. In order for us to measure the heat release, the substance will need to react with oxygen and form different substances. That means its chemical identity will definitely change. So that makes heat of combustion a chemical property. Next is volume. We can observe it without changing its chemical identity. So that makes it a physical property. If we have a lot of that substance, we say it has high volume. And if we have very little of it, then we say the volume is low. That means volume is dependent on the amount of substance, making it an extensive property. Color. It can be observed without making any change to the substance identity, therefore making it a physical property. Now, since we can observe the color regardless of the amount, that makes color an intensive property. Flammability is how easy something can catch on fire. In order for us to observe that, the substance will become something else when it catches on fire. That makes it a chemical property since its chemical identity will change. Temperature of a substance in a reaction vessel can be measured without having the substance change its identity. That makes temperature a physical property. Now, if the content of the reaction vessel is split into two separate containers, the temperature in both the containers will be the same. That means temperature doesn't depend on the amount of substance, and that makes it an intensive property. Size is something that can be measured without changing the chemical nature of the substance. That makes it a physical property. If we have a lot of that substance, the size is large. If we have very little of it, the size is therefore small. Since it's dependent on the amount of substance, we say size is an extensive property. Mass of a substance can be measured without making any change to the substance. Therefore, it's a physical property. Now, if we measure the mass of a substance in a container, and then we split it into half, the mass of half the substance will be divided into two as well. That means mass is dependent on the amount of substance, making it an extensive property. Luster is how shiny or dull a substance is, we can observe that by looking at it without having the substance undergo any chemical change. Since that's the case, that means luster is a physical property. Let's take a sheet of aluminum foil, for example. It's shiny. If we were to tear the aluminum foil to a few pieces, each piece will be just as shiny. That means luster doesn't depend on the amount of the substance, making it an intensive property. Last but not least, reactivity. If a substance is reactive towards water, for example, it will react with water to form other substances. That means its chemical identity will definitely change. That makes it a chemical change. How did you do? Did you manage to classify all the nine properties correctly? Here are six more for you to practice on. I'll place the answers in the description box below. Thanks for watching all the way till the end. Do subscribe like and share this video if you find it helpful. It'll help the channel grow and I'll really appreciate it.